Hello everyone, welcome back to Stories Untold. So we're on the last episode now, the last session, aptly named. Uh, and I have a little bit of uh, insight. I was hoping I would uh, <laughs> since the last episode. Uh, so there was a, uh, a thing in there that was heavily redacted in our, in our manual on our microfilm. That was uh, just called the G, uh, GCS scores. Or the GCS, and they were telling us, "Oh, well, the GCS is now reading. Uh, I think it was going like E1 V1 M1, or E1 M1 V1, something like that." Uh, so I was like, "That's weird." And at first, I thought maybe it was like referencing, uh, like how how some the, the alien entities were behaving, oh, and, and like the, like the th creatures that were coming to our our station, how they were behaving. But no, that's not what it is. Uh, so I looked it up and I went around and dug around for that, that acronym. And what it actually is, is the Glasgow or Glasgow Coma Scale, the GCS. So it is a scale that you use to score uh, how extensive a person's coma is. And at the end of episode three, we started hearing people talking to us as if we were a person in a coma starting to come out of it and also throughout the the course of the episode you know the evm was was all at one which means no responses no movement no nothing but the numbers started going up on all those scores as we went through the, the episode which means that uh the person is starting to uh, display some some actions or some motions uh whether it's um purely reflexive or actually reacting to uh, things that you're doing uh, in, a, in a way that it shows that they're thinking. So it seems like um, we were a person that was in a coma having these weird nightmares and uh, we were starting to wake up from them. So without any further explanation, let's get into the last session and, and see what happens. Okay, so I was trying to skip the intro here, and instead now we have this weird menu that pops up when you hit escape. Uh, it says breathe, keep going, you have to, read what they said, and give up, a coward. That's okay. And then the help, or hell.p, uh, sometimes you do things, sometimes those things are wrong. Get out, get out, get out, get out of the car, get out of the car, get out. Okay. I think that's enough of that for now. Oh. Oh. Uh, I, okay, well, I didn't actually expect that to... Uh, You're quite fond of this show, aren't you? Yeah, I love VHS. It's such high fidelity. Okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. Uh, I'm doing. Oh. Ah. I've this apparently woken up. To feel like home to you. So I guess I, I've I've I'm Don't worry. woken up, I'm but here eventually. I, I'm still not able to. Uh, Just in here. Move myself around. So I'm, ha I'm having to be wheeled around. Okay, are we through in the next room? Just relax, and we'll get started in a moment. Uh, okay, okay, get started with... What exactly are you expecting to happen here? All right, Mr. Asian, now are you ready? Oh. Just hit oh. record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. Um... So it's a lot like was that the, is this the same voice as the the scientist in the um, episode two? It's the same kind of him outside while we're doing this type of situation. This is subject twelve nineteen eighty six twenty three, new session entry. We have myself, Doctor Alexander, leading, and in a room we have our patient, Mister James Asian. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two-week coma following his accident. 
Ah. In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident have seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Well, to think we should let's keep going. Do this one better, James. So when you're ready, let's bring this back. I know how so difficult you... this must be, but you can do this, James. It's time to remember. Um. Your mind. Oh. It's like a conscious black box. Um, can show you your memories. Okay, we're probably going to flash lights here in a second, guys. So. So, uh, prepare yourselves. I'm, I'm about to, to do it. Sorry. Okay, so the weird alien orbs are like the camera that were in your most recent episode being interviewed. You recalled a false memory of a remote weather station. Yeah. You were isolated from the rest of the world, locked inside your coma. We interacted with you daily. Coma. Central operations message authentication. Your family would do number puzzles with you. Anything really to bring you back. Oh, that's what the so loss was about. Answers, James. Do you remember? I have another signal here for you, James. It's at 5610 FM. You can't miss it. Okay, so... So I guess all, all this nonsense here was... Was us uh, doing number puzzles with with the family while we were in the coma, and we were kind of reinterpreting that as us being this guy running this this uh, base or whatever. Interesting. So we're we're apparently not uh, not out of our delusions just yet, unfortunately. Zero four. Type in the numbers, James. We gotta see this. This is twenty F twelve nineteen eighty six twenty three zero four. Is there was there supposed to be an Type F in there? The numbers, James. Yeah, so those were those were the numbers that uh, those were the numbers. A lot, some of those numbers were the numbers for us for our designation as a uh, as a as a uh, patient. I think uh, that's what the doctor said when we first came in. Okay, so let's read this. This is new. Okay, number of vehicles two. Day of the accident was. Uh, so this is Europe, the Europeans' <laughs> method of uh, of writing down dates, uh, day, month, year. We do a month, day, year here in the U.S., but it doesn't make as much sense. Obviously, I, I would prefer. I, I've talked about as a programmer, my preference is this, uh, for date formats. But basically, this was uh, March twentieth of eighty six, Pleasant Hill Forest Road, fatal accident, injured. Our date of birth, we station wagon white, Charles Hennings uh, was the driver, second driver. So it was us and a guy named Charles Hennings who died. Uh, arrived on scene to discover two cars that had been involved in a head-on collision. Mr. Asian found lying down outside his vehicle with head injuries. An ambulance was immediately called. His passenger was trapped in the vehicle in critical condition from wounds sustained in the collision. The driver of the blue sedan, Mr. Jennings, was found dead. Oh, Mr. Hennings was found dead on arrival. It was noticed that there was a strong smell of whiskey from the driver and an empty whiskey bottle on the passenger seat. Mr. Asian was questioned on scene. He described an oncoming blue sedan being clearly out of control, which he swerved to avoid. Mr. Asian's passenger was his sister. The driver of the blue sedan is out as an ex police officer of 20 years. Oh, yeah, um. Okay. 
so I thought they were saying that Mr. Asian was was drunk at first, but no, it was the the guy, Mr. Henning, the Hennings uh, fellow, was that was uh, the drunk. Okay. And everything else is just uh, everything else is just blank, I suppose. Road traffic, yeah, this is the road traffic report file. Are we supposed to, uh... I... I'm not sure what exactly they want from me. Then, what am I supposed to type in? Maybe, um, maybe what's circled? Okay, so let's try that. Uh, yeah, 20 F, 20 F dash fatal accident. Um, I think the next thing was empty bottle, right? Empty whiskey, out of control. Okay, so let's try that out. No, that was not not correct. Okay, so it needs to be in all caps. That, that was my mistake. Once again, case casing on the letters came back and bit me on the ass. Find the signal, James. Listen to the voices. You have to face it, James. Finally. Seven thousand FM. I can uh, do that. It's not like at all. I've worked with Officer Henning for six years and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He, he was a father, a husband, he was fine. No well, as way far as you know. This. It's him, this Haitian guy. He's got something to hide. Yeah, we live in a dark basement. Yeah, we, uh... So... It doesn't make sense to you. It sure doesn't. I'm in the janitor's closet or something. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was in a weird closet. Yeah, it goes so. Can't can open that door. You step out into the hospital ward, but, but only it seems abandoned. Your vision is blurry. Oh, hey, the tape. All of your episodes were recorded to tape. This is the fourth. Sometimes they make you watch your past sessions to see what really happened. Oh, interesting. That would, I would like to actually see that. To see to see what the, the, the truth, the truth of the scenario was versus uh, how we viewed it uh, in, our, in our insane mind. Driving home, don't have the fifth pint. Don't have the first four, uh, for that matter. Uh, <laughs> um, I know, I know, I know uh, some people who didn't listen to that particular advice, unfortunately. But um, uh, fortunately, I was there to drive. <laughs> I was there to be like, "Nah, man, I'll, I'll, I'll drive. How about I drive?" <laughs> First steps to recovery. After a traumatic accident, both your body and mind need time to heal. It's not just the victims that need help. It's the Carers and parents, too. NCS Wilson is here to assist in ver several different areas. Home care, travel, rehabilitation, mindful mindfulness, physiotherapy. Okay, so... so oh! 
He tents up someone else is here. Oh, I probably need this. Got the keys from the table. They weigh heavy in your hand. Okay, so we're kind of viewing this as the uh, adventure game thing uh, again. Ooh, a cassette tape. Today was the first session with Mr. James Asian. Although I fear it will certainly not be his last. When asked about events that have happened in the past, he confused fact and fiction and told us a story about a computer game. I was talking to him. I think he was back at his own house. His mum and dad's house. And he always talked about a room with a red X. One he couldn't get in. I don't know what any of this means or what it's going to do with the accident, but I guess uh, some more sessions will maybe reveal that. We're going to try again tomorrow. Good on you, Doc. You wash your hands, but in this place it feels pointless. Everything's so clean already. Hello? Is there someone back there? No? Um, let's... Oh, another tape! We found him lying there sobbing while his sister died in the car next to him. While Hennings died next to him. What the, what the fuck was he thinking? She was still alive when we got to her. If he'd have done something, they could all still be here. Well, that sort of sounds like victim blaming. Me. But yeah, I wonder if, if that was true. If that's if that's how the, the scene unfolded. I wonder what uh, what happened to our guy, Mister Asian. Did he? Uh, he spent most waking moments in here. I wonder if he. Uh, what the sobbing was about? Did he suffer some kind of brain injury, or...? The only video they have is some horror compilation. It's trash. Wow, that's awful rude. So this is that this is the game that you're in, man. You can't you can't call it trash. Ooh, you only caught a glimpse of the room. You guess that's why there's no details in here. Ah, I see. At least we're aware of our own mental uh, You honestly believe that Hennings issues. was drunk at the will, and not this little shit? If he wakes up, when he wakes up, I want answers. Until then, you handle it. You write it up. I'm out. Who are you talking to, Williams? The doctor, perhaps? Waiting area is dark, but you can feel a presence right behind you. Oh, well, that's good. I enjoy that. Everything's locked. Someone beats on your neck, standing over you. Well, if that's in the real world, perhaps. Feel dread in the pit of your stomach. Ooh, bright light. Okay, we have a 22 year old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers <sighs> died in the accident. I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge it's... full to 10 and give me 100 joules. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm supposed to be. I guess administering my own. I'm supposed to be uh, administering my own thing. How? What's? Which of these are the the, the jewels? Come on. One hundred. Uh, not this one, I guess. There we go. Jewels aren't a uh, measure of frequency, but we'll we'll go with it. Click the button? No. Uh, Can we get this on the screen, please? Infrared x ray. Um, 
I don't know what you want from me. Is this... is this... it? I can't see what I'm doing. Get this on the screen now. Uh... Okay. X-ray? Oh! You have to turn the camera on. Oh, it's us. It's our... it's, our, it's us. Uh... Come on, 100 jewels. Charging up full to 10. Oh. Uh... Uh, okay, I, I did it. Now what? I, I mean, I did it. What do you want from me? I mean, what do you? What else do you? Come on, hundred jewels, charging up full to ten. One hundred jewels, full ten. Set ten. Do I have to turn off everything? Okay, I need to turn off everything else. That, that was my bad. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. Two hundred joules. Keep the amp charge at ten. Interesting. So, so this setup has not been repurposed to be our um, defibrillating machine. Ten. Let's go. Clear. Okay, my, our mind has a some sort here, a weak signal. Let's yeah. Keep going. Increase again. Three sixty. Charge full. Our uh, our minds had an interesting way of uh, reinterpreting the events that have happened to us. Come on, three sixty. Hurry. Hey man, I'm going as fast as the dial will turn. I don't know what you want from me. Clear. Well, would you look at that? Oh hey! It seems we have a pulse. Eyes are moving. Rhythm is stable. Hooray. We need to run an X-ray right away. X-ray. Where are we with that X-ray? Let's get it going now, please. X-ray away. <sighs> Looks like an um, intracerebral hemorrhage. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Oh god. Switch on a drill, please. They're, they're going to drill into my brain. The drill, please. I mean, it's on. It, I switched it on. What do you want from me? Yeah, it's something. There, there it goes. Do I need to switch back? Oh, I see. Well, this will be fun. Mr. Asian, you've made excellent progress. You're doing great. Yeah. We need you to stay calm Jesus. and try to relax while we go through these next steps. You're gonna tie the head down? Alleviate some of this discomfort. I don't think that's what's gonna. I don't think that's how you do it. Uh, you, you typically want to strap the person's head down and maybe make sure they're not conscious while you're doing that. That's uh. Pretty horrifying, Jesus Christ. Okay, so so that's I guess that's why we uh, we have this tape thing as part of our delusions because of the recorder that was in the room. See, it has all the record and play buttons on it. Okay, let's see. Not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six-month trip abroad with friends. Mom, Dad, and your sister Jennifer have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a soul. The room is full of charity, chatty strangers, mostly friends of Mom and Dad. There's a door to the hall. Okay, don't go to hall. You push through the crowd and into the hallway. Sure. The hallway is as welcoming as ever. Only this time, the folks have put up a great big banner. 
up across the main hall. <laughs> Half-finished drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Well, let's look around first before we do anything. Same as ever. Stairs, door to the living room, door to kitchen. Okay, let's... We'll probably have to go upstairs to finish. So, first we'll go to the living room. Oh, that's where we were. That's where we were. Whoops, my bad. I should have figured that's where we were. I, I just, I don't know why I didn't piece put it. Go to the hall. Okay, okay, okay. That's the only thing. Is I wish they would skip. Let's just skip this stuff. Hmm. These thought patterns up at top. I wonder if they mean anything. Hmm. Anyway. Let's go in the kitchen. They say all the best parties are in the kitchen. Who says that? The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table, and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which is proudly on the table, although no one is eating it. Well, that's sad. I dig into that 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 pig. There's a utility room and writing on the wall. Also, Jen is signaling you. Look at writing. Look writing. Uh, read writing. Happy New Year, 1986. Another banner. Weird place to hang it. What was the other thing? The uh, utility room? Go to utility. Just as you're about to head inside the utility room, Jen places her hand on your sh shoulder. Oh no. You hug. You're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party, and she asks if you're enjoying it. Ah, uh, yes. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway, and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. You pour Jen a drink, and one for yourself, too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. Um, sure. You tell her yes, and that you have packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective, and maybe not fuck up so much. She's going to miss you. You're going to miss her. She walks away. She has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There's so much to do for this move, and you can't mess it up. But first, a drink. No. You open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps the fine wine and whiskeys. Sealing the floor racks. A collector. Although he does actually drink them too. There's a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. Look at... Look, bottle. It's a gift from Dad, I think. There's a card next to it. Let's read the card. Pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. No, we don't. With your whiskey in your hand, you take it to the room and take in the room around you. There must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds worth of drinks in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Oh, God. You head back to the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give a th thumbs up to your dad across the room. He nods and winks. Jesus. Go back out to the hall. I guess we need to go upstairs. A few bumps and laughs on the way through, and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's gin. Covered in blood. Look at Jen. She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Uh, okay. okay. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. Cry. Sorry, I don't understand. Um, I'm sorry, I don't... Oh, go upstairs? Sorry, I don't understand. Uh, leave. Okay, everything's getting worse. Uh, 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 um, sh uh, drink, drink the whiskey and forget about it. 
No, she's still on this. Oh, hey, Jen. Hi, Jen. I'm sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I'm so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. Understandable. I have a feeling this is, uh... This is not going to go well. <laughs> we've, uh, we've been drinking a little bit more than I would have, uh... I would have preferred. Okay, so I went and looked it up to try and figure out, like, what the hell <laughs> they want me to type. Uh, put whiskey blue car. Lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the thrill of the sirens. You simply can't go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then, very deliberately, spill the remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. A circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Oh, this is like the alien! Behind them, an army of people all staring. One figure steps... What was... One figure steps out of the silhouette and walks towards you. Silhouette. Yeah, this was the, uh, the alien crash site, right? But now it's uh, put in context. As you approach the man, the the man, the pulsating lights around you get you. dimmer and dimmer. While the pain I in your head is tearing yourself apart over it. But no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident, that poor man, me. You have to remember. It was all your fault. Apparently so. I'm not sure how we thought this. I'm not sure how we thought this plan was going to work, um, I because... You did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and you wrecked all of our lives. I sure did. And you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Yeah, it's like the telltale heart. Say it, James. Say what? Say it. Tell them. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so, um. Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect they'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Oh, Come are we that messed up? Let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. Jeez, we we must really got have gotten completely wrecked. If if we can't leave the hospital at all, like the yeah, the drill into our head. Maybe they uh dam or we had uh brain damage from all the uh the hemorrhaging. It's funny, we're, we're stuck watching this, and uh, our character hates them. <laughs> they hate these crappy, this crappy show. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, so, um, it looks like we, uh, yeah, yeah so it was all, all unreliable narrator, as those horror stories tend to do. Um, yeah, that's messed up. So, so our little plan wouldn't have worked in the first place anyway, because, uh, uh once the guy died, I would imagine they could still test his blood alcohol content and find out that he, like, his blood didn't have any alcohol in it. You know, beyond the fact that they just knew that he wasn't a drinker in the first place. And the fact that we left a party where many, many, many people could testify that we were drunk, stumbling around drunk with a half-empty bottle of whiskey. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, the dad and mom probably would have uh, been able to tell them both as well. So I assume... Our whole, our whole confession thing was just a uh, a uh, formality.
but yeah, uh, I, I could see what, was, what what the problem is too. I, I wasn't thinking about it, but uh, if our character is suffering like these these massive delusions like that, then then yeah, they'd be in no no condition to go with anywhere but a um, uh, some kind of uh, hosp ho some kind of home or some kind of mental facility that could take care of them because. You can't have a, a prisoner who's <laughs> is having such insane delusions. Uh, that would never work. Uh, yeah. So, oh, now we uh, now we are properly listed as James Asian and uh, our doctor is Dr. Alexander. So, yeah, that, that kind of put, I guess that kind of put context on um, on all of the other episodes. Why we uh, why we had such a horrible view of the home from the house abandoned uh you know everything went from nice and wonderful to completely horrible instantly you know the accident happened and completely wrecked everyone's lives then lab conduct was kind of trying to unlock unlock our core memories uh by drilling into our head <laughs> which which we uh we did in the <laughs> in there um and then the station process, which was just a massive dilution, uh, interpreting us hearing our relatives speak to us while we were in the coma and reading us these number puzzles and stuff. And then, uh, of course, we all, and then the last session that kind of wrapped it all up and told us what, what the hell was going on. So yeah, um, if you learn nothing else from the, from this, uh, don't drink and drive. Uh, you're, if, if you have to ask yourself if you're good to drive, you're not good to drive. So uh, don't do that. Anyway, uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, this was an interesting little turn. Like I said, I, I couldn't remember exactly how this ended, but um, it, it's, it's all making sense now. In any case, thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.